Well, hello, Rebel, and welcome back to my life. If you've been around for a while, you might remember that some time ago I wrote an article on Medium called The Wheel of Time Sucks, and if you've been around for not even that long, you've probably heard me talk about how I don't like The Wheel of Time. Needless to say, that article's gotten a lot of comments on Medium and on social media and other places and whatnot, which I don't normally pay attention to or respond to, because a lot of them just aren't aren't like good comments. Like a lot of them kind of boil down to, oh my God, shut up, you SJW, or, or whatever. Uh, but recently I noticed that the Medium article started getting a lot of traffic and a lot more comments than normal. And then somebody on Tumblr linked me to a person named Daniel Green, who made a YouTube response video about my article. And his his video is called The Wheel of Time Sucks A Response. Sorry, sorry, The Wheel of Time Sucks Response, not a response, but you get the idea. It's a really good video. And I say that with no sarcasm. It's a really good video. Like, he's, he's very intelligent. Um, he, he talks about a lot of good, interesting uh, stuff. Um, I'm going to link it in the description, and you should go watch it, probably before you watch this video. So I wanted to talk about his video today, and kind of the most important reason why is because he doesn't come from the same place that a lot of uh, comments and responses to my original article come from, which is, again, oh my god, you stupid SJW. He seems to care, uh, at least to some degree, about... Uh, feminist representation in fantasy, uh, LGBT and queer representation in fantasy. Um, so like that's, that's cool because if somebody's just like women shouldn't need to be good in fantasy, then I, I don't even want to have a discussion with them. And I don't feel like there's a good basis for discussion with them, but Daniel wants to have good, you know, women and, uh, non men represented in fantasy and is approaching the, the argument from that place, which I just think is like really good and really cool. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm not trying to like refute or go point by point in his video and, and say how he's wrong. In a, in a lot of his video, he's just, he's just right. He's just correct uh, about certain things. And I want to talk about some things about my article and some things about what he said and my opinions and some clarifications on all of those points. Uh, the first one is a fair criticism of his that I basically state some things as though they are sort of like facts or irrefutable uh, when they're not necessarily. And so my viewpoint on that when I wrote the article and still now is that that article and whenever I talk about the Wheel of Time and this video itself, it, it's all just opinion. It's all just my opinions on things. Um, um, and sometimes you can state an opinion in a way that comes across like you're stating a fact, and I definitely did that. The biggest way that I did that was when I uh, is spoke specifically to Robert Jordan's intentions when he was writing uh, The Wheel of Time. I was stating my opinion on his intentions but that's a really big subject, and it's the most important part of his video, so I want to save it for the end of this video. More broadly, there are certain things that I talk about in the books that then Daniel says, no, but that's that's not true, that's not what happens in the books, that's not actually, like, that. that's just not a factual representation of what's in the text. And he points out a few times in his video that I didn't do any research for my article. And that's true. <laughs> I didn't do research on the article because I'm not a professional book reviewer. I'm not even a professional person who talks about books. I review, I have reviewed some books in the past. It's not really my thing. I'm not a professional reviewer. I talk about my general impressions, uh, uh, like opinions on books, what I liked, what I didn't like from a very, very personal perspective. And if I wanted to be a professional reviewer of books in the same way that like somebody like Lindsay Ellis is a professional reviewer and, and speaker of cinema, I would think that it was very important to fact check what I was saying and back up my arguments based off of, uh, you know, like lots of thoroughly researched facts that have been fact checked. But I do think it's okay to state your opinion on the internet, even if it's not a, a, a particularly well-researched opinion. I say in the article that I quit the Wheel of Time around book five or six, I still don't remember which book it was, uh, and that there are like, you know, another six or seven books if you count the, the prequel trilogy? There's a prequel trilogy, I think? I don't know much about the Wheel of Time. And I state that I read it uh, when I was 19. I'm 33 now. So this is like almost 15 years ago that I read those books. Uh, and this is just my opinions from back then. And the only reason that I'm talking about it at all is that because I exist in the fantasy space. I write fantasy books and I read and talk about fantasy a lot on this YouTube channel and in other places. And when you exist in this space, the Wheel of Time comes up 
a lot, a lot, a lot, and people ask me or talk to me about the Wheel of Time all the time. I get questions on social media, I get questions here on YouTube, I get questions everywhere about like, what do you think about the Wheel of Time? And I get people who have heard one-off comments from me about various things that I didn't like about the Wheel of Time and feel the need to like jump in and engage in an argument or discussion with me about those things. I don't want to do that for the same reason that I didn't thoroughly research my article on the Wheel of Time, which is that if I don't like something, I don't spend a lot of time with it. I don't want to then go research more things about it. I, I didn't like it. I don't want to spend more time with things that I don't like. Because again, I'm not a professional reviewer. A professional reviewer's job is very often to deep dive and analyze something that they do not enjoy to figure out why. That's not me, I'm just talking about my opinions on the Wheel of Time. So I just want to make that like very clear on everything else that I'm going to say on this video and retroactively for that article because I probably was not clear enough about that in the article. Uh, for example, Daniel talks in his video a lot about the women of the Wheel of Time, their agency as it's displayed through the series, the character growth that they go through, where their stories end up, how they interact with the main character, and, and all of that is probably true. That is just not what I experienced when I read the books, right? It is very deeply clear to me that Daniel is somebody who, I mean, obviously loves the Wheel of Time series, uh, but has also spent a lot of time reading it and uh, meta-contextualizing it, studying behind-the-scenes stuff. I mean, flat out, definitive statement, Daniel Green knows way more about the Wheel of Time than I do. And for that sort of deep dive analysis of all of the reasons that the series is great or why you yourself might like it, you should listen to him before you should listen to me. My article was, honest to God, created as a thing that I could link people to if they wanted to get in a discussion of the Wheel of Time with me, because I didn't want to do that. I've spent so much time talking about the reasons that I don't like it and, and listing them out that I was just like, I'm just going to have a list, and when somebody's like, you didn't like the Wheel of Time? Why? I can just be like, here, here's why. Here's exactly why, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. Because again, I don't like spending a lot of time engaging with things that I don't enjoy. And in his video, Daniel's obviously uh, kind of upset at me. Um, and that makes sense. If somebody came from one of my favorite authors and was saying mean or hurtful things or nasty things about them, I would also probably be uh, a little bit upset with them. And if I did respond, I would probably uh, respond in a similar way that Daniel did, particularly if I thought they were saying something false or incorrect or, or, or misleading. Now, my default is not to respond to that stuff because it is, again, engaging with uh, negativity and things that I just don't find pleasurable to, to, to talk about. I don't like talking about all the reasons that somebody else is wrong. Um, and, and Daniel says in his video, he doesn't either. He ignored my article for a long time when people kept sending him the link and finally was just like, you know what? I'm bored. I'm going to watch the, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to read the article, which is exactly what happened with me this morning. I was like, somebody linked me his video and I was like, you know what? I'm bored. I'm going to watch this thing. And I enjoyed his video a lot more than he enjoyed my article, uh, which is which is great. So that bit about wanting to have that article out there as my definitive statement on my negative feelings towards the way of the wheel of time is something that I put out despite the fact that I don't generally give books bad reviews. I just don't like to do it. But that, as with everything, is is very very dependent on context. For example, I try, and I've probably slipped on this at times, but I try never to give negative reviews to independent books. For example, because I I just don't feel like they need that. It's kind of hard enough for an indie author out there, as I myself know full well. And so if I don't like it, I I, I kind of just don't talk about. It. And the Wheel of Time article was one, as I said before, a desire to have a definitive statement out there so I didn't have to talk about it every time that the Wheel of Time came up. And two, a statement of opinion about why I didn't like it to hopefully give somebody else a barometer of what I do and don't like in my fantasy. And on, on, on that count, I actually think that it's fairly successful, except in Daniel's case. Most people who read that article and have left comments have been in one of two camps. The first camp is people who agree with me on feminist issues, queer issues, racial representation, and are like, yes, this is also what I did not like about the Wheel of Time. And the second camp has been people who think that these issues are stupid, irrelevant, uh, don't matter at all in the creation of art, and they are the people who say, shut up, you stupid SJW. So on that front, I feel like my points were communicated in the article 
uh, in the way that I wanted them to be communicated, to give people a very clear read on how I feel about the book and why, to give them a better view of my opinions as a whole. If you too did not like The Wheel of Time because you don't think that it does representation and treatment of women and minorities and uh, the queer community well, you will hopefully agree with me on that level of analysis with other people. And to be totally honest, you will probably also be more likely to enjoy my books, because that's a huge focus of my work, as anybody who's read my books or watches my YouTube channel will already know. And if you are the person saying, shut up you stupid SJW, because you don't care about social justice issues, you don't care about feminism or representation, I want you to know that you should not trust my opinions on any other book reviews either because I'm not I'm not even trying to like I'm analyzing things from a very different place than you are. So the point was communicated effectively except for Daniel who seems to care about the same issues that I do but thinks that my reading of the book is totally and completely wrong. And again, that is his right and again he definitely knows the Wheel of Time better than I do. In fact, the highest praise I can possibly give Daniel Green's video is that it has made me want to go back and reread the Wheel of Time, which is not an impulse or a desire I have had in the 15 years since I first tried that series. All right, now, the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is Daniel's comments on my comments on Robert Jordan himself and his intentions with the series. Uh, this is the big topic. This this seems to be the thing that I said in my article that uh, got Daniel the most upset and that he feels is the most uh, egregious in my article. In summary, what I said was that while I was reading the series, I had the sudden feeling that Robert Jordan wanted to keep writing The Wheel of Time until he was dead and leave it as the great unfinished work of Robert Jordan. Unfortunately, I still stand by that. That is still the feeling that I have from what I read of The Wheel of Time 15 years ago. That is not a definitive statement on the author's intent. Nobody can know the author's intent except for the author. We can pull clues from context, and Daniel referenced several contextual things um, that seemed to point the way uh, that, that, that that was not Robert Jordan's intent. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of the things that he referenced were metatextual. They were word of God. They were outside the book series itself. Uh, he mentioned at one point that there was commentary from Robert Jordan uh, at the end of the audiobooks. Uh, I never listened to the audiobooks. I don't generally listen to audiobooks, uh, so I never heard that and and have no no frame of reference for that. The only frame of reference that I have is the five or six books that I read. And my memories of those books old as they may be, and uh, possibly inaccurate as they may be, is the only frame of reference and is the only context that I have for my opinion on what his intent was. And just like I think it's okay for people to talk about their opinions online in general, I do think it's okay to say what our opinion of the author's intent was. It's obviously not okay to misquote uh, what somebody said or to say, well, Robert Jordan literally told someone he wanted to leave his work unfinished at the end of his life. That would be a flat out lie. Um, this is my reading of the book and what I think Jordan wanted on some level. And, and I, I do actually think that, uh, despite the fact that, that, that Daniel pointed out in his video, which I didn't know when I wrote my article, uh, Jordan died kind of young. I think he was 50 or in his 50s or something like that. And he died from uh, health complications. He didn't, you know, he, like he died from uh, essentially a disease and probably much younger than he wanted to. Again, this is my opinion. I feel like if Jordan had lived another 30 or 40 years, uh, we would have gotten five or six more Wheel of Time books. Um, and the same thing probably would have happened at the end of his life. That's just what I feel from what I read in the books. Although again, Daniel is the first person who has made me want to go reread the books and probably if I if I find the books enjoyable, listen to some of the meta textual commentary and see if I do still feel the same way. And I might feel the same way even if Robert Jordan explicitly says that that's not his intention. Uh, there are lots of authors uh, who have said that their intent with a work was one thing, but where a lot of people who read the work uh, just kind of disagree. This can be in a small way or in a nebulous way where the disagreement is not very strong, such as when J.K. Rowling says that she intended for there to be subtextual queer representation in the Harry Potter series. A lot of people who read the books are like, no, no, I don't think you did. I think that you said that afterwards, uh, because you thought it would sound good. 
That, that, that's my opinion on that book. And then there are the more obvious clear-cut examples where disagreement comes more easily and is much more firm and resolute. Like the recent book Adam, uh, where the author claims, oh no, this was this was never meant to be transphobic or homophobic at all. But like, I don't know how you can read that book as anything other than transphobic just just based on the book. So my opinion on Robert Jordan's intent is much, much softer than that. Um, that is the feeling that I had uh, from reading those books, and, and it actually upset me. It actually uh, made me very upset, and I don't know if you know how rare it is for me not to finish something that I'm reading. I can think of two prominent examples, period, and they are both big epic fantasy things that I was really enjoying, until all of a sudden, all of that enjoyment was broken and discarded in, in such a way that I just, that, that it, it really upset me. The Wheel of Time was one of those things. Uh, and, and so the, the, the way that I feel about it is still the way that I feel about it. Um, and, and, and I have not, you know, like had any reason to change the way that I feel about it um, un, until this video happened. So I, I, I get like, again, I really think it's a good video, and I'm glad that he made it because it's making me reevaluate things uh, kind of retroactively. To me, not to sound like too highfalutin or whatever, but this Daniel's video in response to my article is uh, kind of one of the best examples of internet discourse that I've seen in a long time. Um, I state an opinion, he states other opinions, and it's, you know, like, uh, I feel like kind of misinterpreted what I was trying to say in my article, but again, it doesn't matter what I intended with my article, it matters how he read it. And it's up to me to decide whether or not I care about how he read it. Uh, and I do, because he seems really cool, and he makes really good points. Nobody has to comment on something whether they do or don't like it. But I did for reasons that I have already explained in this video. Nobody has to respond to my article. Uh, nobody has to read it or interpret it in any particular way. Uh, but Daniel did read it and he did respond for reasons that he makes very clear in his video. And I'm not obligated uh, to read any comments or to have opinions on what people think about what I said or to respond to those, but I am because I, I, I like it. So definitely, I mean, I don't have that, you know, like many people who watch these videos or follow me on social media or anything like that. Um, but, but definitely please don't hate on uh, Daniel whatsoever, because again, I really like his video seems super cool. And I, I, I appreciate him mentioning these things that I think will help me talk about wheel of time in the future in a better and more educated way. And which also makes me want to re-engage with it, at least on some level. God, it's, it's a very long series and my reading list is like super, super long, but I, what can I say? He made me want to check it out again. I think it's a pretty cool internet conversation. Uh, Daniel, if you happen to watch this, um, thank you for your video. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry that I was overly aggressive and whatever towards Robert Jordan uh, and, and his intentions in particular. Um, again, it was coming from a place of like, having a long-standing feeling of having been betrayed as a reader, and then uh, constantly having that attacked and vilified by people who at attacked me, um, not from a basis of good faith or sound logic or argument, um, which which is not you. You came at it on like, yo, that, that doesn't make sense for, for reason, reason, reason. So thanks again for your video. Uh, Rebel, thank you for watching this probably quite long by the time I'm finished editing it, and somewhat rambly uh, series of thoughts about the Wheel of Time and what I said about it and what somebody else said about it. A particularly extra special thank you to my patrons who should now be scrolling down below my face. If you want to be one of those awesome and incredibly attractive individuals, click on the Patreon link which should be showing down right over there. I will try to see you next Friday. Maybe. Bye!